Welcome again. We'll start with one of the uh, second classes in the series for Kurukshetra. That's the analysis for Kurukshetra May 2017. Now the first thing is this book this time this magazine was based on the idea of transforming the rural India. So all the rural development policies, all the yojanas, all the schemes have been included. Now why it has been an important idea to study rural India per se? As of 2011, you have 69% of the rural population, but is it, it is expected by 2050, this population would drop down to only 50%. However, in India, rural area accounts for the agriculture, which is a predominant or I could say the major sustaining activity, uh, economic activity of India. So if this ratio decreases tremendously, it would affect the agriculture as well. Therefore, there is a need to improve the uh, conditions in the rural area so that more people are inclined to move on to the rural areas. Now, what are the dimensions of rural poverty? Rural poverty can be understood under various dimensions like the homelessness, uneducated people, assetless people and the ill health. Now, around rupees 1 lakh crore per year is spent by the Department of Rural Development for the developmental initiatives in rural area. Besides that, across all departments, there is 3 to 4 lakh crore rupees that is given per year to help the uh, rural conditions. Now, we would be talking about individual aspects of the rural area. The first one that we would be talking about is water conservation. Now, water conservation is important. So, if you have rainwater that's coming, you can harvest it by means of tanks or you can have a rooftop harvesting system. So, that's a kind of rainwater harvest. You have farm ponds that are established. However, under the Mahatma Gandhi National Rural Employment Guarantee Program, you have Mission Convergence that has been released that talks about the watershed regions and the Rich to Valley principle. Then again, you have the Mukhi Mantri Jal Swavlamban Yojana, which talks about providing water to the drought, drought prone areas of. Uh, 3,200 villages and 92,000 conservation structures in Rajasthan. Now, state-wise, there have been various schemes for the development of water conservation. Uh, in Rajasthan, it was known as Dobas. In Andhra Pradesh, it is under the name of Nehru Chettu. In uh, Telangana, as Mission Kakatiya. In Madhya Pradesh, as Kapildhara Dugwell. In Maharashtra, as Jalyukta Shivir. So, as of 2016-17, there have been nearly 15.47 lakh water-related works that have been completed which includes nearly 5 lakh ponds and that increase there is an increase of 90 lakh hectares of irrigation potential also national rural water drinking program has been released and that talks about providing safe water to the arsenic and the fluoride affected areas in India now the mission by 2030 is providing water to every household and that, that is known as Har Ghar Jal scheme Again, as we said, safe drinking water to arsenic and fluoride affected areas by 2021. There has been fund coming in from center. Uh, so we have these data that would be available as the updates at the exam race current affairs section. Uh, under the Yojana scheme, you can go and you can find out all the updates there. So I won't be uh, mentioning each and every values here. The next is the ODF, state, ODF states. So you have the open defecation free states. Three of the states have already been declared as ODF, that's Sikkim, Himachal Pradesh and Kerala and that, this forms an important question. Again, 119 districts and 1.7 lakh villages have come under ODF. Now, from the pre uh, prelims perspective, uh, some impa important facts are important. However, when you are talking about mains, you need to understand all the topics under rural poverty, for example, or uh, water conservation, for example, uh, should be included. So, all the state-wise programs, all the basic data, you must know. The next is poverty. So, you have nearly 50,000 poverty-free gram panchayas that have been declared. Now, one of the interesting schemes is the Sansad Adarsh Gram Yojana. This talks about adopting a village by the uh, member of the parliament. So from the Lok Sabha, it would be uh, a village of his own constituency. From the member for the member of Rajya Sabha, it would be the village from the state. Now for 2016, they will adopt one village. For 2019, they would adopt two villages. And by 2024, they would be adopting one village each year. So that would be five more villages. Then you have Disha Committee that's to make uh, the villages poverty free. And this works at district level. Mission Antodaya. 
that's again removing the poverty from the households and making the region poverty free by 2019 PM Ujwala, Ujwala Yojana that talks about providing the LPG connections. Uh, nearly 1.5 crore households are already provided LPG connection. The target is to provide this to 5 crore people in the next 3 years. Now, the maximum connections have been done in UP. Again, an important question. Highest connections in UP followed by West Bengal, Bihar, Madhya Pradesh and Rajasthan. So, this is a sequence of uh, states. The next is Swachh Bharat Mission Grameen. So this is the village version or the rural version of the Swachh Bharat Mission. Uh, this talks about ODF uh, uh, making the region open defecation free, promoting safe sanitation and the sanitation coverage has all, uh, already increased from 42% to 60%. Pradhan Mantri Kaushal Vikas Yojana. Kaushal means a skill. So it basically talks about the skill India or the skill development program. This is again the rural version of this. You have to train, uh, the idea is to train nearly 5 lakh people by 2022. The first round targets 20,000 people. It would provide skills in nearly 1,500 1, institutes. So there would be training. Uh, and in 2015, there was a national policy for skill development and entrepreneurship that was established which aims to empower all those who have been left behind in the educational system and uh, like school dropout, college dropout, so those would be involved in the vocational training courses. Now the mi micro credit plan, this talks about providing micro finances or loans and credits to the farmers for the cropping season and for the various uh, um, technological investment like purchase of tractors and so on. So you have the Deen Dayal Antodaya Yojana or the National Rural Livelihood Mission, that's the first thing. The next is providing, uh, there are, have been active contribution of the women self-help groups. So you have that, again you have the women farmers who have been supported under the Mahila Kisan Sashakti Karan Pariyojana and one third of the Gram Panchayats have already been reached in the same. The, uh, then what we talked about is the rural, uh, rural Employment Guarantee Scheme that talks about minimum 100 days of guaranteed employment. Uh, already uh, you have nearly 52 lakh workers who are involved in this project. This has increased tremendously because previously it was 25 to 30 lakh workers. Nearly 88 lakh assets have been geotagged and first time ever there has been the highest contribution for this scheme both by the center and the state. Again one of the good efforts is the solid waste management in nearly 11,000 villages of Tamil Nadu where nearly 4 lakh uh, magic pits for liquid waste management have been installed. The next is Deen Dayal Upadhyay Gram Jyoti Yojana that talks about electrification. Now if we want to develop infrastructure in the rural areas, what is a prerequisite? You would have banks coming in, you would have insurance companies coming in, you would have finance companies coming in, you would have more mechanization in the agriculture. To support all this, you need to have the electricity. So uh, Gram Jyoti Yojana talks about electrification of the villages. There have been already identification for nearly 18,000 villages which do not have any form of electricity and the major focus would be to work around these villages. So Assam, Meghalaya, Jharkhand, Chhattisgarh and Rajasthan are the most prone areas and by 2018 we aim to achieve 100% electrification in rural areas. The next is Pradhan Mantri Gram Sadak Yojana. Again, rural connectivity is a major issue. So if you have good agriculture crops, that should be transported to the urban areas for the purpose of uh, circulation in the country and uh, for the purpose of ex exports if you have additional uh, crops that come up. So in 11, 2011 and 14, there was nearly 73.5 kilometers per day of road network that was built in. However, this has increased to 130 kilometers per day in the recent year. In the last seven years, this year has recorded highest constru uh, construction of the roads in the rural areas with nearly 75,000, uh, sorry, 47,000 kilometers of roads that have been constructed. Nearly 11,000 uh, habitations have been connected with the road network and now we are trying to use greener technology to reduce the carbon footprints for the road construction. The next is Pradhan Mantri Awas Yojana Grameen. Now this is again the rural version of the same housing for all scheme by 2022. Uh, this time there has been an increase in the household construction. Now nearly 36 lakh houses have been already completed under the Indra Awas Yojana. 
you have the avas of pfms platform where you can transfer funds at the state level and uh, it is uh, said that you would have nearly 1.2 lakhs in the plain areas and 1.3 lakhs in the hilly areas that would be given as the uh, assistance from the government for development of the houses now this uh, avas yojana brings under skill india digital india make in india project all under one hand the next is doubling the farmers income so that's the next idea for the government uh, schemes that if the farmers income is increased there would be more people who would be willing to stay in the rural areas so you have the rabi sowing that has increased by 6% fertilizers in, uh, intake has increased by 9% the funds for the same has been increased by 21000 crores now you have the kisan credit cards that are coming up uh, these have been released under the jandhan scheme then you have the nabard funds for the same uh bhim app has been uh, uh, uh come into practice to uh, to uh, sorry enhance connectivity and uh, trade for the purpose so you have good infrastructure technology and modernization that has come up the next is e nam the electronic version of the national agricultural market scheme this would help uh, the farmer to directly apply and uh, sell its uh, sell the produce to the highest bidder so you have the electronic configuration that has come up and this would integrate the 585 regulated wholesale markets that exist as of now the next is the r urban strategy that's the gandhian strategy that tries to bring in all the urban amenities to the rural areas so as we said opening up of bank accounts uh, inclusive approach for sustainable development what amrit singh said about development is uh, that you need to have economic development human uh, social justice and human rights so all this would come under the same head and you would have a kind of comprehensive development that would lead to job generation ms swaminathan in his, one of his reports have said that 1 million jobs can be created in next 10 years in rural areas by low cost strategy and that includes increasing the production expanding the irrigated areas reclaiming the wastelands you have increasing the uh, income and finally labor intensive techniques so you have more labor that is employed again the kalams version of pura that's providing urban facility in rural area is being incorporated to work around in the rural areas the next is agriculture now this is the whole and soul of the rural economy so the gdp from agriculture has uh, has come down however from 19% to 14% and this is the region where we need to focus on so you have more employment investment infrastructure and credit uh, credit facilities and technology that are being uh, provided to the rural area so you have interest subsidy that is given for short term credit now this accounts for a loan of 3 lakhs per year to 7.5 crore farmers at a rate of 7% previously they had to take loans from the money lenders and they were under huge debt for long so now government is intervening the same and with literacy coming up you have uh, more scope for uh, kind of uh, proper channelization of the mechanism then you have the market intervention schemes and price support systems coming up rashtriya krishi vikas yojana uh, which was launched in 2007 and 8 has now been subsumed under the uh, same uh, agricultural sector schemes now you have the crop insurance this is again very important insurance of the crop has been released in 2016 now this has come up with a unified package insurance scheme and the restructured weather based crop insurance scheme so the premium for kharif crop has been kept at 2% for rabi at 1.5% and for horticulture crops at 5% the idea is to promote fa farmer welfare it's a basically an area based approach uh, strategy we will talk about the area based approach strategy in a separate lecture in geography the next is risk management and disaster mitigation is one of the priorities uh, so this would be the key aspects that would be dealt under the insurance schemes the next is shama prasad mukherjee our urban mission this talks about developing rural clusters for entrepreneurship and skill development krishi unnati scheme now this unnati scheme talks about integrating the various smaller schemes in the rural areas like horticulture development agriculture marketing sustainable agriculture extension of agricultural services and the agricultural census now it's important the population census is conducted every 10 years however agriculture census takes place every 5 years so a proper scheme 
to work around the statistics of agriculture census would be very useful. The next is Pradhan Mantri Krishi Sichai Yojana, that's the irrigation scheme for 2015 that was launched. It talks about her khet ko pani or uh, water for every, uh, every field and then you have more crop per drop. So better irrigation facilities like you have drop irrigation techniques. So all those should be incorporated. The next is Pandit Deen Dayal Unnati Krishi Shiksha Yojana. This talks about providing education for organic farming to the villagers. Rashtri Krishi Shiksha Devas has been declared from 3rd December to 9th December and this is the first time, uh, this is uh, in the name of the first agriculture minister Dr. Rajendra Prashad that this time duration has been taken into account. The next is Jai Kisan Jai Vigyan week from 23rd to 29th December. This is in order to celebrate the birth anniversary of Chaudhary Charan Singh and Atal Bihari Vajpayee. The next is Pro Poor programs. Now these are again very very important. The first is Jandhan Yojana that we already know talks about financial inculcation. So opening up of bank accounts, rupee cards, so rupee debit cards, rupee credit cards, kisan cards. Then next is Aadhaar, that's a unique identification, the 12 digit identification provided to every individual based on the biometrics. The next is mobile banking. Now all these three together constitutes JAM, that is Jandan, Aadhaar and Mobile Trinity. This has been released by the National Payments Corporation of India, NPCI and this is possible only by a simple phone. You have the DBT, that's Direct Benefit Transfer. Now there is no intermediaries that come in. So if you are uh, uh, allowed or sanctioned certain amount that would come directly into your bank accounts. So that's basically what is DBT. So all the scholarships, all the, uh, uh, all the funds, all the schemes that are reaching the rural areas, the rural education setup, the rural uh, infrastructure housing sections directly reaches into the bank account. The next is PM Mudra Yojana that talks about refinancing the micro units. PM Suraksha Bhima Yojana talks about incident, uh, accidental insurance for, uh, which was launched in 2015. Jeevan Jyoti Bhima Yojana talks about life insurance launched in 2015. Both of these we have covered under the class on social security in India. So for details you can refer that. The next is Atal Pension Yojana also covered under the same uh, class. So you can refer that for detail. The next is the various digital initiatives. Now, uh, when we are talking about less cash economy or cashless economy, we need to have digital initiatives. So one of those is e-money. So most of the post offices, nearly 70% of those now have the facility for EMO. The next is Twitter Samvad. That is by means of tweets and SMS, you can uh, spread your voice, spread your message. All the Jeevan Praman Patra or the life certificates are now digital. You have the Digital Locker India facility which can help you keep all your documents online. Pragati is a platform for public grievance redressal which is again online now. You have Digital Mela which was released recently that, that was again to boost the cashless system. So it works under two heads. First is the Lucky Grahak Yojana that's for the customers and the Digital Vyapar Yojana that's for the small entrepreneurs or the small businesses. Next is BMAP launched in uh, 2016 December. Till now, it has nearly 18 million downloads. You do not require any account number. You can have a virtual account number for the same. There is no need for a mobile. Uh, you can have it simply on a mobile number or uh, your uh, virtual name. The next is there has been an increase in the point of sale machines that are being sold to 13%. The again, an in, uh, important initiative is DigiGao where you have Pradhan Mantri Gramin Digital Sakshata Abhyan that aims to reach nearly 6 crore households. In the field of health, there have been many, many developments. The first of all is providing anti-rotavirus vaccines. So you have the anti-rotavirus vaccination that has been provided. The next is my scheme, that's absolute mother's affection scheme to promote knowledge for the breastfeeding uh, exclusively for the first six months. Jo swach hoga, wahi swast hoga. That talks about providing cleanliness and therefore you would have better health conditions. Kaya Kalp scheme is very very important because this talks about uh, rejuvenating the government hospitals by improving the cleanliness and the surrounding areas of the uh, government hospitals. Swach uh, Swast Sarvatva, that's the three mission that has been adopted, cleanliness, sanitation and hygiene. Based on this, you again have the wash practices, water sanitation and hygiene. You have the national strategy to eliminate the TB by 2025. 
uh, which is uh, considered as the biggest killer in India. Uh, next is eliminating Kala Azar and Filariasis by 2017, eliminating measles by 2020. So these are some of the targets that we have for the health sector. Again for 2017, we have the national health policy which aims to increase the GDP to 2.5%. The government spending has already increased uh, in India and it's now 30.5%. Providing health insurance is again a major idea. So increasing the health insurance from 30,000 to 1 lakh is again one of the uh, uh, major steps that have been taken place. Till now only 28% of the households uh, have at least one member that is being covered under the health insurance. So increasing the health insurance coverage is again important. You have now various Jan Aushadi Kendra, the uh, various Aushadi Kendra provide high generic medicines, the high quality medicines. The next is PM Surakshit Matitra Abhiyan that aims to provide health workers uh, for the antenatal care. So you have the fixed service that is provided every ninth day of the month. So you have the doctors coming in and uh, a, a regular checkup going on. The next is Panchayats. So Panchayats come under the 73rd Amendment Act under the Article 40. 29 subjects are, are covered in the 11 schedules. Now Panchayats follow a subsidiarity principle that is very very important to understand. So what happens is the larger body should not function or should not control the things that could be governed by a smaller body. So all the powers that can be done or that could be handled by the Panchayats are given to the Panchayats and that is what is subsidiarity principle. Now the next is Mission Panchayat Empowerment. You have the various uh, awards that have been given for the uh, same. You have the next is the COP to T that is removing corruption, unemployment and poverty and moving on to transparency, entrepreneurship and affluence. Gram Uday to, uh, to Bharat Uday Abhiyan that was released in 2016 at the birth anniversary of B.R. Ambedkar again aims to provide social harmony in the villages. You have the Bharat Net mission that's again very important that is connecting all the panchayats with a cable network and a broadband. So that's the kind of digital initiative again. Then gender e equality. So for gender e equality, you have the first that is Beti Bachao, Beti Padao Abhiyan that was released in 2015 in pa uh, Panipat in Haryana. Sukanya Samradhi Yojana 2015 that aims at opening up girl bank accounts. The next is panic button on the mobile phone started in 2017. So all numeric phone will have the keypad 5 and 9 number numbers key 9 and 5 which will have the panic button and all other smartphones would have three times short press of on and off button. Then you have the universalization of women helpline 818 since 2016. Uh, the draft legislation on trafficking of persons bill 2016. Childline has been released which is a helpline number 1098, again important. Koya Paya portal, again an online portal for the missing persons for 2015. POSCO e-box in 2016 which talks about protection of child from sexual offence. And Pradhan Mantri Grameen Shiksha Sarvatra Abhiyan that again talks about providing digital education to the rural India. The next is Skill India. India is considered as a skill capital of the world. So you have nearly 54% of the people who are below the age of 25 years uh, who, who have the capability to work. So providing Kaushal Vikas Yojana is one of the elements of Skill India. Uh, the next is Ustad, upgrading skill and training in traditional arts which was launched in 2015. Nai Manzil Yojana that is supported by World Bank for educational dropout minorities from the six uh, religions that is Muslims, Christians, Sikhs, Parsis, Jains and Buddhists. Aspire a scheme that is to promote innovation and rural entrepreneurship. You have National Apprentice Pro, uh, Promotion Scheme with nearly 10,000 crore and it aims to target 50 lakh apprentice. The Make in India uh, and the Stand Up India. So these are the two other schemes that have come up. Electrification as we already talked about. 100% electrification by 2018, covering the 18,000 uncovered villages. You have the GARB app that is the Grameen Vidyutikaran Android app that talks about real-time electrification scenario in the 6 lakh villages of India. Vidyut Par that provides power availability on a real-time basis. Urja that's Urban Jyoti Abhiyan mobile app that connects customer with the urban power scheme and the PM Ujala Yojana that's the Unnat Jyoti Yojana which provides affordable LED bulbs to the rural areas. 
द लास्ट इज द नेशनल पंचायती राज डे विच इज सेलिब्रेटेड ऑन ट्वेंटी फोर्थ अप्रैल टू लैख रुपीज हैव बीन गिवन टू ग्राम पंचायत फॉर फाइव ईयर्स फॉर द इंफ्रास्ट्रक्चर डेवलपमेंट देन यू हैव द ग्रामोदय संकल्प दैट्स अ क्वार्टरली मैगजीन रिलीज बाय द मिनिस्ट्री ऑफ पंचायती राज विच टॉक्स अबाउट अ कम्युनिकेशन बिटवीन द पॉलिसी मेकर एंड द ग्राम पंचायत एट द लोकल लेवल For the same, you have a mobile app and a YouTube channel that has come up, and the various awards for the rural areas. You have the Din Dayal Upadhyay Panchayat Sashakti Karan Puraskar, uh, Nanji Deshmukh Rashtriya Gaurav Gram uh, Sabha Puraskar. So these are the two major awards that are being given for recognition in rural areas. With this, we cover the Kurukshetra May 2017. We'll be covering further lectures based on Kurukshetra and Yojana in the upcoming classes. Have a good day ahead.